75% of film and television professionals are out of work at the moment in the UK. The thing is, I've spent the last year doing what a lot of my colleagues are now being forced to do, sitting outside of the industry and looking for alternate ways of making documentaries, or at the very least making a living. I'm in my project proposal era. Now don't get me wrong, finding work is about a lot more than just pitching projects but I've been spending literal hours in front of this screen this month doing just that. And one of you in the last video asked me a question about how to find work. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to go through what I've been doing this month. I really wanna be sharing with you the behind the scenes of what things actually look like as I'm doing them. And the best way for me to do that at the moment is to show you how I get the documentaries going, really. Pitching or proposals is one of the tools or avenues that professionals and creatives can use to secure work projects. Often when an organisation needs a one-off project done by a contractor or agency, they'll release a call to tender or an invitation to submit a pitch. And so then it's your job as the hopeful contractor to put together a document that outlines your plan to hit all of the points on their brief and why you're the best person or the best team to do the job. Honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it could be a really cool opportunity. And the truth is that it's a weird time out there for documentary filmmakers in the UK. 75% of film and TV professionals are out of work, but many of those broadcasters and other commissioners aren't looking for commissions until 2025. Even The Guardian did a call out to hear from professionals who are out of work or even looking to change career out of film and television. I, on the other hand, am not working in TV and film right now. I stepped away about a year ago to focus more on the types of projects I was doing in between my TV contracts. So that is making short documentaries for non-profits and the like, and offering complimentary communication services. Truthfully, I think that competition is really tough for those call outs and calls to tender that are looking specifically for documentary work right now. Well, I'm sure you have lots of exciting ideas, but um, yeah, fing fingers crossed. I had this call earlier on today and I really wish that I captured some of the things that I was saying. Um, because I was talking about pitching and I was talking quite candidly and I was like, I don't know if this whole pitching thing is the one. Like I said, I have really mixed feelings about it. You've almost got to move your business model around the fact that you're going to be making these pitches because you're not paid for your time to make the pitches. There's not a special way to differentiate yourself in the way that there is when you are making connections with companies. I've been staring at this freaking budget for what feels like forever. I feel really stuck and I feel frustrated. I've got so much to do. And am I overthinking things? Yes, I am. I'm going to stop recording and go and try and do, I don't know what I'm going to do. Pitching can be a lot of work. I'm still navigating that line between how much work can I put into a pitch knowing that it might not pay off. I know some people get worried about having their ideas stolen. It's something that crosses my mind, I won't lie to you. I definitely think about that and find ways to um, I guess protect my intellectual property as far as I feel comfortable because I do feel like there's got to be a sense of giving like if you're pitching yeah they've asked you to pitch you you kind of know the deal like here they've invited participants to make recommendations for the timetable what they're asking there is something that takes time and research that is part of the expertise that you would be paying for so I'm going to be very careful with that bit. now on the flip side you've got the option of just trying to form relationships with prospective clients directly even when there is no call to pitch hi I'm doing well thanks how are you working a lot with social enterprises and non-profits but I also do my own independent projects so that was just a networking call. And as you probably heard, like I, it might not lead to anything, but it sounds like there might be an opportunity there. Sure, there's still the time investment when you're building relationships with clients and no call to pitch that might not lead to anything, but still, I would rather have a new contact who knows that I'm somebody who is competent and friendly and willing to help them. If you do make it to some kind of sales call, there will normally be a process where you'll put a proposal together afterwards, but I find that to be a lot less intensive need to prep a like one pager proposal i've already had the sales call they just need something to show to their colleagues and sort of approve i just need like my notebook to just write down really concisely like what am i actually doing my parents want me to call them I think 
I might call them tomorrow instead of my horrible daughter. I also sometimes do cold pitching or I've run workshops in the past. There are loads of different ways to try to get new clients, but word of mouth is hands down the best way to find new work in my experience and in the experience of almost all the other business owners and freelancers that I know. Honestly, I'm still trying to improve on the way that I increase my client referrals using word of mouth. I spent this morning going through my lead generation plan. I reached out to three previous leads I'd had that just never converted, we just lost contact and they kind of went cold. But at some point they were interested in my services and I just sent a couple of simple emails to them reminding them who I am and saying hi. 20% of the work will give you 80% of the results. So one day last week, I was up until about 1 a.m. working on two separate proposals. My camera died, but I did it. I sent off both of the pictures that I wanted to send off today. I also had a load of client deadlines. It all fell on the same day, but it meant that the second proposal, I had really a day or so to work on it. Weirdly, I've spent a lot less time on this um, proposal, but I feel more confident about it. I'm hoping this could be really positive. So I just need to finish putting this onto a template now. And honestly, I was really pleased with that second pitch that I put together. And not that the results should show you the value of what you've done. But when it comes to pitching, all you really want is that callback. And on that second pitch, I got a callback. And unfortunately on that first pitch, I did not. I'm on the go, but I just got an email saying that one of my proposals has made it through to the next stage. So not a total waste of time, maybe. I was lucky enough to get some feedback on one of the pitches that I sent out. I had a follow-up call yesterday with a pitch that I did earlier on this year, a few months ago, and it, it wasn't successful, but I got some really useful feedback about what I was doing well and why I didn't end up being successful. Here are some of the things that I found out in that call that I want to pass on to you. One of the things I'm learning about myself is that writing is one of my strengths. I'm good at refining my answer and making it really structured so that it really responds directly to what the person is asking. From why your idea responds well to the client's brief, to the content of your pitch itself, making sure that you've put in some time and research into your idea is really important. Consider the distribution of your documentary. This is great advice at all levels, I think. Why is the commissioner, broadcaster, even fund a great fit for the idea that you're pitching? And then some of the things they said that I could improve on in particular were making sure that the timeline and budget were front of the pitch, perhaps even the second or third slide. I have the same questions as a lot of you. One of my main goals for this year has been increasing the predictability of the stream of client leads that I get in through the door and therefore the stream of work that I'm doing. But after a really intense month of lots of networking meetings Hi. and pitching and proposals and timelines and budgets for these prospect projects, I really want to take a breath, step back and think about what's working well, niching down on the opportunities that I'm pursuing and trying to create for myself. But please subscribe along if you do want to follow along on this journey. I've been making monthly videos about what I have learned and what I am continuing to learn as a documentary filmmaker. And as we know, it's really not easy out there at the moment. So maybe we can even help each other out in the comments. But in the meantime, I will see you in my next video on the first Monday of next month. And take care in the meantime, look after yourselves, preserve your energy. We can do this. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm recording. Can you see me? I've been recording the talking head part of this video and I got an email. I got an email about one of my proposals. It's the, one of the stories that I tell in the video and got a new client project.